Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Good to see you again, folks. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, Art and I are with our favorite Hollywood historian, Manny Pacheco. Manny, great to see you again. Well, always happy to be back with you two. <laughs> Me and the boys. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, man, I have a question for you. Um, uh, at one point, I was a big uh, uh, Perry Mason TV series uh, fan for, for years and years. In fact, I think I had like 400 uh, uh, recorded when I had a DVR. First had DVRs, and I just recorded them all because somebody was running them. And I had seen them all originally. Uh, but I was thinking that uh, Raymond Burr actually was in the movies first playing, quite frankly, some uh, 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 pretty awful uh, uh, Chinese th kind of characters, but also heavies. And yes, I was thinking yes. that he's not the only one that, that uh, I know for a while it was the people who were in movies looked down their noses at TV for a while. Uh, but a lot of people made that crossover from movies to TVs over the years. Uh, uh, do, you, do you have some like background in that kind of stuff for us? Well, you are absolutely correct in that, that, that really movie stars thumb their noses at uh, the idea of television. And of course, that was an edict that was presented by the movie moguls as well. So when you got everybody against it, it wasn't going to happen. But, you know, somebody had to break the ice. And uh, that individual uh, is none other, and it's, it's an obvious answer, than, than Lucille Ball. I mean, she was a, a, a film star and uh, also a radio star. And radio and films had a very great relationship uh, as opposed to television. But she decided to take her radio show, My Favorite Husband, and uh, turn it into I Love Lucy. And she brought along another film star. I mean, we, we would be remiss if we didn't mention Bill Frawley. William Frawley, you know, Fred Mertz was yeah. just an iconic character actor who appeared in hundreds of films. Uh, Miracle on 34th Street is one that comes to mind. He was in a couple of Abbott and Costello films, but he was in a lot of films, and uh, he ended up on television as well. Now, you're right, Art, you know, uh, Raymond Burr uh, of Perry Mason fame, he was uh, a heavy in a lot of films. The one that comes to mind, I think, that you might remember was Rear Window, the Hitchcock thriller. He's the one across the across yes. the patio area that actually murders his wife yeah. and James Stewart cat catches him. So yes, absolutely. But there are other uh, real iconic um, actors who appeared in their own shows. Many times to try to lure the actors, they would uh, name the show after the actor. For, ex for example, uh, uh, there was one, Love That Bob, the Bob Cummings show, Bob Cummings. Right. Yeah, right was about. Actor. yeah, Dick Powell did an anthology show. And so, of course, Dick Powell was a big actor of the 30s, 40s, and, of course, did a lot of film noir in the late 40s and early 50s. Um, and uh, there was another called the Ann Southern Show. Ann Southern, of course, another one of those zany uh, actresses who appeared on in Warner Brothers films. So they would use these uh, these actors, use their name. The Andy Griffith Show, that's a that's probably the most famous of the, of the group. Andy Griffith was a 1950s uh, film star and humorist. He appeared in No Time for Sergeants and uh, other films. I mean, he was just a, he was not a big movie star but of course television was an easy fit for him well he was mm. he had a huge hit with uh lonesome roads what was that a oh in the crowd? Yeah. Well, he plays the real villain oh yeah. my god yeah yeah he but, was a real but bad you're guy. absolutely right um when they moved to television they got their own show that's right you that's know william frawley might be the exception he played a, a character but he was always a character actor yeah, well, there were others. Frank Frank Phelan was the father of Dobie Gillis. He was a character actor, and he yes. wasn't the star. But yeah. yeah, you're right. Most of them would, 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 would transfer over and become the big stars. Now, the really big ones that, that come to mind, the, the most obvious, the absolutely most obvious, William, uh, William, uh, Walter, Walter Brennan. Walter Brennan was not only in The Real McCoys, but he had a second hit with The Guns of Will Sonnet. And, you know, we're talking a three-time Academy Award-winning actor. I mean, appeared yeah. in The Pride of the Yankees, Sergeant York. I mean, he appeared in so many. I mean, he was in Red River. Uh, he had just finished doing Rio Bravo. I mean, he was in, in just tons of films. And now he's the star of not just one, but two 
big hit films. And then you get others. Uh, they worked well in comedy. I mean, you'd get like Buddy Epson in the Beverly Hillbillies. Yep. Uh, he was, of course, a, a big star in the 30s and 40s. But then you had more recent stars from the 50s, like Eddie Albert, who then appeared uh, in Green Acres. Uh, he was, uh, of course, in Roman Holiday with Gregory Peck and Audrey Hepburn. Uh, Edgar Buchanan, who was a great character actor sure. in, in uh, uh, Westerns, and he was uh, the star of Petticoat Junction. Yeah. So, I mean, we're talking about really, yeah. you know, guys like er Ernie Borgnine, who absolutely, was, was heavy, and he was wonderful. He yeah. was wonderful in a, yeah. in, a, in a comedy. So that's right. Uh, and he had won an Academy Award for Marty, and he, of course, he was in From Here to Eternity, and now he he's the host of his own sh comedy uh, in McHale's Navy. But you know, you also had Phil Silvers as Sergeant Bilko, mm. and you had Forrest Tucker in F Troop. So these yeah. were oh, I mean, right. stalwart right. actors. These were usually the actors that were billed third. You know what yeah. I mean? They weren't the yeah. star per se, but they always had that building right under the the uh, yeah. the, the love. Well, they were, but they were household names. They were. They were household and, names. You, you know, it's kind and of interesting that there's a, there's a back there's an interesting backstory here about the studios objected because they thought television could take over the world, and yeah. then uh, enough big stars said, and that's a different language. What did they say? Like that? Was, because they were big enough that they could do that. And so they went and they did a crossover. And then all of a sudden, the studios started embracing the yes. new technology by producing television shows. Yeah. Okay, yes. And you can see the same thing happening today where all of the studios were going crazy over the streaming services. That's and right. then companies like Disney and others have Netflix. created their own Disney, uh, the, their own streaming services uh, because... They right. see the wave of the future, and it's well, going to be a constantly evolving mix of things. But uh, there were a lot of people who took big risks going down, and the yeet, also because the they thought it, it, it cheapened their skills. Well, one of the will. things that the movie moguls jumped in right away when they finally decided to was, was to pre pre uh, present anthology series. Yeah. So for a while, they, they would do it in science fiction or horror. So Boris Karloff, one of the great screen characters, would be the host of Thriller, and he would present a different show with different guest stars. Uh, there was also a, a show in the mid-60s. Uh, the name escapes me, but I'll tell you, it was a revolving group of stars that included Gig Young, Charles Boyer, I mean, and David Niven. I mean, that's that's a that's a big three. I mean, we're yeah. talking big three stars. And then, of course, there were uh, other stars that would would be multiple hit uh, uh, stars with television, just like Walter Brennan. One that comes to mind was Robert Young. Of oh, course, yeah. he was, uh, you know, uh, he was in that great uh, family drama uh, uh, that that uh, what was it called? Father Knows Best. Father Knows Best. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, with of course, yeah, with Kitten. That's right. <laughs> so actually, John, John, then, were you involved he, in some he, of these stars coming to uh, 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 dramas uh, uh, in the in the sixties, uh, like Charlton Heston? Were you involved in some of those things yourself? No. As, weren't you? <laughs> no, did you have some child actor uh, stints with some I TV? Was, I TV did. Uh, I did close to ten years on television as a child actor. Right, um, but it was all it was all live television. Oh, it was, okay. nothing nothing recorded. It's so now that now that I was in the year Marcus Welby MD was the other show that Robert Young was uh, was in. Yeah, so just so you know. Now, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention the actual potpourri of stars that walked through the set of Batman. Oh. Remember the great villains that were on Batman were terrific stars in their own right. The stars were clamoring to be on Batman. And it all started because Cesar Romero as the Joker and Burgess Meredith as the Penguin right. opened the floodgates. These were bona fide actors for 30 years, and now they were willing to be campy on Batman. And so you end up with these string of fabulous stars. You had three different stars playing Mr. Freeze. George Saunders, an Academy Award winning actor, Eli Wallach, one of the great method stars of the 1950s, and a director, Otto Preminger, a director of all things playing Mr. Freeze. You had uh, Vincent Price as Egghead, David Wayne as the Mad Hatter. You had uh, uh, Victor Buono as King Tut. 
You okay. also had uh, Shelly Winter. Manny, Whitmer, Manny, Manny, Manny. I, I, I know you're a fan of, of Batman, but I think we've we've jumped the shark here. The the the, the <laughs> long list of people as guest uh, guest oh, I know, but this was one Batman. Show, I mean, this was is show. not the same thing as Buddy Ebsen. No, no, but you got to remember that, you know, uh, uh, Burgess Meredith appeared on Batman, I mean, I think a dozen times or so. And, and, and Joe also, was, and know, also and Nixon went on to, uh, uh, what was the comedy show? Sock it to me? Uh, oh, yeah, that, Nixon was on. on, 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 on I'm, I'm sorry, Manny, but I'm, I'm more of a purist in this. I want to go back to. Yeah, John, you're a purist and driven that got slow. Real television shows that actually. <laughs> Took the risk of being on television when, you know, their whole career could have been threatened by. You mean it. like Dean Martin and his variety show? I mean, he well, had been a film he, actor. He probably should have left that one alone. No, I, was pretty <laughs> I good remember. Good. I remember the Dean Martin. Okay, the one thing he did do was he he was able to jump up on the piano fairly successfully most of the time. But, but there was. One there was one other actor who hosted a variety show for many years and he was a, a big comedic star, you know, for, for, you know, the forties and 1950s. And that was Red Skelton. Oh, mm. oh yeah. 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 And the Red Skelton show was arguably maybe in, if you don't count Carol Burnett, who, I mean, the show was, that's a pristine right. show, but, but Red Skelton show was really one of the finest shows ever presented as a variety show. I mean, it was yeah. really, really good. Yeah. So I mean, you can't you can't go wrong, and it really showcased what he was really good at playing the sad clown. I mean, he was really the best at playing the sad clown. So I mean, these names are big, and yes, since you cut me off on these wonderful actors that appeared on Batman, <laughs> <laughs> there are others. I mean, later in the seventies, you also had Raymond to turn this all around. Raymond Burr well, reappeared at, as Ironside. Sure, but, I, but there's a Manny. There was a point at which. It all of a sudden became acceptable, not only right. acceptable, yes. if you were really a star, you got your own show. But I think know. the one that took the biggest chance, in my estimation, although okay, he surrounded himself with top talent, uh, was Carl Malden in the streets of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. he, he, I mean, he was really working yeah. a lot in films. So he did and not that, have and that was an early that was an early jump. Right. Yeah, that, that was I, one of those moves that was... Yeah, I mean, it didn't hurt that he was with Kirk Douglas's son, but Michael Douglas was primarily known at the time as a producer. He was just producing uh, One Flew Over the Cook Cook yeah. He wasn't known as an actor. No, he wasn't. And he wasn't known as a producer. Yeah. He wasn't really... He, he might have been known in the industry because he might... Uh, uh, Kirk Douglas's son. But he was he was a newcomer. Right. You know, he was the pretty face. He was the pretty face. Yeah, That's right. Carl That's Malden's right. big nose. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, it's a, an interesting historical look mm -hmm. at the melding of Hollywood film and now Hollywood, totally. the center of television. Right, 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 right. One more I want to throw out before we conclude this. And we can't forget uh, William Boyd, Hopalong Cassidy in the Oh, night. yeah. Yeah. Because he, he was one of the early ones to jump on from movies, the serials that, we, that became very popular Saturday mornings. To well, the TV, to TV. Yeah, I, Manning. I wonder if the case of William Boyd isn't different because in in um, in theatrical movies releases, he had a franchise. He had the, right. the Hopalong Cassidy franchise. He owned the he and, owned the franchise. That's right. And if you recall, early television. What did early television do? They played really really bad old cartoons, and they played old movies. As a kid, I didn't think they were all that bad, but okay. Yeah, John, well, you know, you've know, been I'm, really that mouse keeps running. You've been the really pushing, the and they keep running, and the background repeats oh, itself. You've been, you have been, been pushing our relationship here by saying, "Well, with Charlton Heston live, it wasn't such a big thing, even though you were involved in it." I was giving you an opening because you're a star. In my mind, you're a star, but you want to be yeah. humble, okay? But Gene Autry. And those cartoons, I like those cartoons. I'm with you, Manny. Listen, yeah. listen, well, there guys. was another one that came in in the 50s, was kicking and screaming. He did not want to do television. He he was he was uh, uh, an actor from Gone with the Wind. Right. Uh, he had, he was just signed on to, uh, into from, from Here to Eternity. So you know, 
casting George Reeves as Superman, that was a big deal. He didn't want, he did not, he thought this was going to last a year and it was going to go away, and it, and it didn't. It became, it became a phenomenon. So, and if if you study his life, he he got depressed because he was typecast as Superman. That's right. He felt that he could never go back to to quote straight acting. That's right. That's exactly. And ultimately, he took his own life. And there was. Well, you know what, guys? In about thirty years, we should be discussing all of the big TV stars that jumped to Hulu and Amazon <laughs> <laughs> and non-network, uh, non-network right. streaming only services. They went uh, from ABC to streaming services. I will be right. thrilled. I will be thrilled to talk to your children on this show. Uh, in 30 years. <laughs> well, you can bank on it. Well, actually, I have a 25-year rolling plan, but in five years, I'll make sure that I pencil that in. <laughs> anyway, thank you again, Manny, for a, just a wonderful review of stuff that just is in your head. So it's it's really a delight always, the, the depth of knowledge and nuance that you uh, share with us and our audience, and we truly appreciate it. Thank you. Love talking to you, Manny. You bet. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.